Mark Osler, he's an American legal scholar and law professor at the University of St. Thomas School of Law in St. Paul, Minnesota. Mark, uh, watching the proceedings today, I was struck by the fact that the defense attorney spent so much time in his closing statement that the judge interrupted him so that the jury and court reporter could take a break. Um, I've covered a lot of trials in the past. I can't remember a closing argument going on and on like this. Was that a smart strategy? Well, it certainly has been called into question. I'm a former federal prosecutor myself and tried many cases. And, you know, you need to be concise or else you may lose the jury. You may water down the core of your, your arguments. And I think that definitely was a risk, uh, particularly on the defense side today. Is it, Normally we'd see two hours, maybe three hours of argument in a complicated case like this. They went for about six hours between the two sides. The prosecutor said this in his closing argument, the, the case is called the state of Minnesota versus Derek Chauvin, not the state of Minnesota versus the police. Why do you think it was important for him to make that distinction? Well, one key reason is that eight of the 12 jurors on their jury questionnaire said that they believe that the police keep them safe. And I think this really had in mind those jurors, that they wanted to reassure them that this wasn't a case about taking down the police or defunding the police or anything like that. It was about one former police officer, and that's what they had to look at. That, in fact, the government cast this as a pro-police case in the sense that the police can retain their credibility if cases like this are addressed the right way. Mark, you pointed out uh, you were a federal prosecutor, so you know all about closing arguments. They're your last chance to really use your powers of persuasion on the jury before they begin their deliberations. Give me your overall reaction uh, of what you heard and saw today as this case came to a close. Yeah, I thought that the government's theme was one that most people would embrace, which was believe your eyes. In other words, the best evidence they had was something that the jurors mostly had seen before the trial even began, which is the raw video of what happened on the street uh, on Memorial Day of last year. And they were just hearkening back to that. Now, they probably didn't need an hour and three quarters to do it in the opening part of their, their closing uh, argument. But they did come back to that theme repeatedly. Another thing that they did that I didn't see coming and may be effective is they hearkened back to the nine-year-old girl who witnessed the killing of George Floyd and said even she understood that this was wrong, that this wasn't a legitimate use of police force. I kind of wondered why they were taking the risk of calling a nine-year-old, given the trauma that could cause to such a young person. Apparently, that's what they were after. On the defense side, uh, you know, obviously, they were trying to fuzz things up, create reasonable doubt, talk about how uh, the context could have justified what Chauvin did and question causation. And they didn't have as they didn't have that much to go with, um, but certainly Eric Nelson made the most of it. Uh, we get the sense that things could get very volatile in the city, uh, depending on the outcome of the verdict. We just showed some images, uh, people already gathering outside the courthouse. It's a very, very much a sensitive time where you are. Give me a sense of what it's like in your community tonight. Yeah, yeah I, I'm actually in Minneapolis. The law school is in Minneapolis, and I'm about a mile and a half from the courthouse. I'm looking out my window right now. There's an armored personnel carrier um, just right, right in front of my window and several National Guardsmen standing in front of a hotel. This is not what we're used to in Minneapolis, and, and there's a lot of anxiety, certainly.